The Disabled Tyrant's Beloved Petfish Transmigration Chapter 67 Absorb Essence Liu was a bit uncertain and said very slowly, Your Highness, what does this mean? When Jing Wang wrote this note before, it was in order to vent his frustrations. He never thought it'd be snatched away by Liu. Seeing his own unmentionable thoughts completely exposed in front of Xiaoyu, he was even more worried that Xiaoyu would realize from this that he had already known about the Karpiao's identity. Heart pounding, Jing Wang instinctively stiffened his expression and silently shook his head. As long as he refuses to admit it, it'll be fine. Li Yu. Li Yu made a fist with his hand and placed it against his mouth, giving a light cough, what your highness means is that you also don't know and that this has nothing to do with you. Jing Wang hesitated for a moment and then nodded his head firmly. Li Yu laughed secretly. He had already read plenty of stories with Jing Wang before and knew that in those romance novels, all of the Yao wanted to absorb essence. Even more so, it meant that they wanted to do the unspeakable to the scholars. So what Jing Wang meant was. He also wanted to do that with Li Yu. The big scoundrel was full of dirty thoughts. Even after being caught, he still dared to deny it. Who would have thought Jing Wang would have such a naughty side to him? On one hand, Li Yu silently complained that Jing Wang was a scoundrel, on the other hand, he smiled and said purposely, was this really not written by you? But this is clearly your handwriting, your highness. Jing Wang. Jing Wang panicked, it's really not me. All right, all right, I understand. It's not you. Li Yu had to do his best to not laugh out loud. Eyeballs turning, he continued to tease Jing Wang, then does your highness have any idea what absorbing essence means? Li Yu howled with laughter deep inside, who let you eat my tofu before? Is the tofu burning your mouth now? Ha ha. Jing Wang. Jing Wang begged for mercy. With a smile, he pulled out a small fish made from pure gold from his sleeve and silently placed it in Li Yu's hand. Xiao Yu liked gold and silver. In order to make the fish happy, he drew this small gold fish himself and then had it made recently. This fish is so cute. Is it for me? Li Yu was instantly attracted to the gold and shiny small fish, looking at it repeatedly in his hands in a pleasant surprise. The little gold fish was cute and charming. Its tail was even curled into a circle. For some reason, Li Yu thought it really looked like his fish self. There's a part on the fish's back where a hanging rope was attached. It was also the water grass green color that Li Yu liked. Li Yu fondled the string lovingly and asked a question that he knew the answer to, where does this tie to? Jing Wang embraced him with a smile and hung the little gold fish on the multicolored silk belt around Li Yu's waist. Li Yu fiddled with the fish on his waist for a while before turning his bright and shiny eyes back onto Jing Wang, your highness, don't change the subject now. Tell me what absorbing essence means. Jing Wang. Xiao Yu was somewhat difficult to deal with. Jing Wang was troubled but also liked it. Li Yu persisted. Jing Wang was just frustrating over what excuse to use to evade this when Wang Shi, who was standing outside the room, carefully knocked quietly. Actually, Wang Gong Gong didn't want to interrupt them at this time either. His Highness had instructed before that he wanted to spend time alone with young Master Li. However, the Sixth Prince had arrived and had been waiting for quite some time at Ningui Hall. Wang Shi knew that the Sixth Prince tried to hurt his master before and didn't give the Sixth Prince any face at all. However, the Sixth Prince said that before he arrived at the Jing Estate, he saw the Emperor prior. Therefore, Wang Shi couldn't leave the Sixth Prince to dry for too long. Your Highness, the Sixth Prince came over from the Emperor, saying he came to bring you gifts and apologize. Wang Shi said full of apologies. He accidentally disturbed his master and young master Li again. Last time, 
young Master Li and his master had a huge disagreement. Wang Shi and many of the other servants all felt very worried. Later, everything finally passed. Wang Shi practically wished the two people's relationship would become even better. But did Master and young Master Li finally get together or what? According to Wang Shi's silent observation before, his master and young master Li had laid in bed together once. Not to mention, they were always pulling and tugging each other physically. Wang Shi thought they must have gotten together for sure. Later he saw that young master Li and his master were talking, reading and writing together. The two of them were very polite towards one another though, there seemed to be more to that. Later, young master Li refused to sleep with his master and ran away. Yunikwan couldn't bear to see the words carved on the Jing estate's walls. Then, young Master Li was finally willing to let his master get close to him again. Then, this time they should have been together already, right? However, every time his master met up with young Master Li, Jing Wang always had to take a cold bath afterwards. Young Master Li didn't know about it but as his personal servant, Wang Shi was very aware of this. If they were together, how could this be? Therefore, if he were asked to describe what's the relationship between his master and young master Li, Wang Gong Gong could only say that it was vague and hard to discern. Wang Shi was afraid of disturbing Jing Wang's happy occasion but after bracing himself to actually interrupt them, Wang Shi seemed to feel Jing Wang let out a breath of relief. Wang Shi Jing Wang patted Li Yu's hand and decided to go chase away the sixth prince first. Actually, he was also afraid Xiao Yu would continue to ask this thing. He was really feeling awkward and didn't know how to answer. Therefore, he was using the sixth prince to escape this for a while. Xiao Yu loved to tease, perhaps when he came back in a bit, the other would be bored of asking about this matter. Your Highness is your honored self going to see the sixth prince. As soon as Li Yu heard the sixth prince's title, his original teasing expression immediately turned nervous. He unconsciously grabbed Jing Wang's sleeve. The sixth prince. In the original story, he was Jing Wang's biggest opponent. After the second and third prince failed, the sixth prince all of the sudden entered the emperor's eyes. This person has been hiding behind the third prince this whole time, full of malicious deceit and merciless schemes. Jing Wang suffered quite a bit of losses to the sixth prince and almost died in the sixth prince's hands because of Chu Yan Yu. The sixth prince caused a lot of trouble to Jing Wang before he completely retreated in defeat. Even if the plot had changed until nothing remained the same now, the sixth prince's character setting shouldn't have changed that much, right? Li Yu knew secret information regarding the sixth prince, but he didn't know how to warn Jing Wang. Before when Ye Ching Huan was being plotted against, Li Yu said he unexpectedly received the information. Perfect lies were very hard to make. Good thing Jing Wang believed him and didn't ask much. If he said that he learned this information accidentally again, it would seem too fake. Furrowing his brows, Li Yu attempted to think of a reason to tell Jing Wang to be on alert against the sixth prince. Jing Wang saw Li Yu furrow his brows in deep thought. Reaching his hand over, he used his slightly chilled fingertip to smooth out the wrinkles on Li Yu's forehead. Your Highness, if I want you to be on guard against the sixth prince. Jing Wang was so gentle when Li Yu immediately blurted it all out. Jing Wang gave him a look and nodded. All right. Li Yu. Are you not going to ask why, your highness? Li Yu asked again. Jing Wang pointed at the wall. Next to a portrait of fish, there hung the three basic rules that they had signed together. Jing Wang was afraid that he'd forget his agreement with Xiao Yu, so he specifically hung it up on the wall to remind himself from time to time. Li Yu understood his meaning. He was saying that according to the rules that they've agreed on, Jing Wang believed him. If Li Yu didn't want to explain then Jing Wang also wouldn't ask. But the agreement clearly only required Jing Wang to not ask about Li Yu's whereabouts. Who would have thought Jing Wang would also apply this to everything Li Yu was unwilling to say? Wasn't this a good thing? Yes. It was very good. Extremely nice. 
nothing was better than this. Li Yu's heart felt touched. However, Li Yu still looked for a reason and advised to the best of his abilities, Your Highness, the sixth prince hurt you before. You can't trust him at all. Li Yu actually didn't know why the sixth prince was here but taking caution was always a good idea. Jing Wang nodded his head. He touched Li Yu's cheek with a smile, wanting the other to relax. Jing Wang left with Wang Shi. First, Li Yu didn't really want to show face in front of the sixth prince. Second, he was also afraid that there wasn't enough time left for his transformation. Therefore, he decided to stay inside the room and wait for Jing Wang. The notes that Jing Wang wrote were still here. The evidence wasn't actually taken away. By himself, Li Yu looked at the bold calligraphy. They were both men. He could understand Jing Wang's feelings. Although Jing Wang had such thoughts towards him, because of the three rules they agreed on earlier, he didn't really do anything to Li Yu. At most, he was only venting his passion on paper for a bit. His Highness was really very good. There's no way he'd let the prince who treats him so well suffer. Li Yu thought, lips curving mischievously again. The sixth prince waited for a long time before Jing Wang was finally willing to come out to see him. Mu Tian Xiao stepped forth and wanted to say some pleasant greetings. Jing Wang only glanced at the stuff he brought over and coldly nodded his head. He didn't even gesture for the sixth prince to sit for a while, pretty much equivalent to driving away his guest. Mu Tian Xiao rubbed his nose and said warmly, My apologies for what happened previously. I hope you will forgive me, elder brother. Mu Tian Xiao didn't mention the third prince at all. He originally only came for himself anyways. The sixth prince apologized to Jing Wang and gave gifts in compensation. The third prince didn't. Who was superior and who was inferior, it was obvious with a glance. Mu Tian Xiao already wanted to be rid of the third prince as soon as possible. The biggest hindrance to him obtaining the throne was never the highly arrogant second prince, nor was it the third prince whom he played like a fiddle. Fifth elder brother, before I was blinded by villains and almost misunderstood you and your fish. Mu Tian Xiao immediately changed the subject and asked, I heard that fifth elder brother pampers this fish a lot and brings it around with him at all time. How come I don't see it now? Mu Tian Xiao also felt that Jing Wang's fish was somewhat strange and wanted to take the opportunity to have a look at it. With a tight face, Jing Wang gave Wang Shi a glance. Wang Gong Gong immediately said, responding to the fifth prince. His highness's fish is quite delicate and doesn't like to see irrelevant people. Mu Tian Xiao, who was randomly smacked in the face by a fish. Mu Tian Xiao still wanted to ask some more but Jing Wang had no patience to listen to him ramble. He was tactfully informed that since he came to apologize and bring gifts, leave them behind and he may go. The sixth prince didn't even get a cup of hot tea to drink. Jing Wang gave Wang Shi a look, directly indicating for Wang Shi to send a guest off. Mu Tian Xiao. Mu Tian Xiao said his goodbye and left Ningui Hall. He was practically one step out of the estate when a person with disheveled hair ran over to him. Your Highness, Your Highness. As this person wailed, he attempted to dive into Mu Tian Xiao's arms. Mu Tian Xiao vigilantly pushed this person away as he thought that Jing Wang might be scheming against him here. When this person raised his head and revealed his tear-stained face, Mu Tian Xiao received a huge shock. Don't you recognize me, Your Highness? The person said tearfully. You. You're you heir. Mu Tian Xiao practically couldn't believe it. This person before him, with a gray dejected complexion and eyes swollen like walnuts, was the once elegant and lofty Chu Yan Yu. If the other's appearance didn't still look faintly similar, the sixth prince definitely wouldn't have recognized him. You heir, how did you get like this? It wasn't easy for Mu Tian Xiao to contact Chu Yan Yu before. Sending letters into the Jing estate became harder and harder after each attempt. Chu Yan Yu only vaguely mentioned that he wasn't really favored in the letters. How could Mu Tian Xiao have imagined it was as bad as this? Chu Yan Yu could only bite his lips and cry. 
how was he supposed to tell the sixth prince that Jing Wang never even looked at him properly before? He also failed to drug Jing Wang, causing himself to be drugged instead in the end. No one tarnished him. He was tied up and was unable to move. After losing his senses, he cried and wailed hysterically, desperately attempting to twist and turn his body, acting utterly shameful. He was tied for three entire days before the drug finally wore off but his body had already broken down from the torment. But what was even more unbearable was what followed. It seemed like everyone at Ching Shi courtyard heard his begging and crying during the time he was out of his mind. The looks they gave towards him were full of disdain. Chu Yan Yu pulled out of his unbearable memories and knelt down on both knees before the sixth prince. Your Highness, I really can't stay in Jing estate any longer. Please take me away. Chu Yan Yu didn't want to stay in Ching Shi courtyard, didn't want to stay in Jing estate, and didn't want to see Jing Wang ever again. He wanted to be with the sixth prince. He liked the sixth prince and the sixth prince also liked him. He wanted to go back to him. A beauty was begging with tears in front of him. If it was before, Mu Tian Xiao would have definitely comforted him with soft words. However, he was at the Jing estate right now. Mu Tian Xiao was afraid that this was one of Jing Wang's schemes. He quickly scanned the vicinity and felt like there were eyes all over them. Chu Yan Yu's appearance gave him a big shock. Mu Tian Xiao was afraid that Jing Wang deliberately created the scene where he and Chu Yan Yu seemed to be having an affair. He just gained the opportunity for the emperor to finally notice him properly. He definitely can't have Chu Yan Yu ruin his reputation like this. He needed to sever all relations with Chu Yan Yu immediately. Young Master Chu, you and I only met a few times before. Since you've entered Elder Brother's estate, you belong to the fifth prince. Why say these words to me? Mu Tian Xiao purposely reprimanded in a loud voice and pretended to push away Chu Yan Yu angrily. If young Master Chu continues to pester me, don't blame me for being impolite. Becoming vicious, the sixth prince slapped Chu Yan Yu across the cheek and then left in a huff. After Chu Yan Yu learned that the sixth prince came to Jing Estate, he escaped to the outer courtyard with great difficulty in order to meet with the sixth prince. Who would have thought that the sixth prince, who had loved and pampered him the most before, would actually hit him? After this slap, Chu Yan Yu completely became dumbfounded. One could practically hear the sound of his heart breaking. Concealed from a short distance, Jing Wang watched all of this indifferently. Your Highness, this, this. Wang Shi didn't dare to speak. His Highness never cared whether Chu Yan Yu lived or died. So, why would he order Wang Shi to secretly allow Chu Yan Yu the chance to run to the sixth prince's side? However, Wang Shi now could also tell. Although the sixth prince hit Chu Yan Yu, based on Chu Yan Yu's reaction, these two people most probably knew each other from before. Jing Wang gave him a look. Wang Shi understood that his master wanted him to continue with the next step of his instructions. Wang Shi nodded and went to do his business. Because of this little thing, Jing Wang felt like it delayed his return to Xiaoyu and hastily headed back. The room was already dark. Most of the candles that were lit before had already been extinguished, leaving only a dim yellow light from the lantern on the table next to the bed. In front of the bed, in the room, he couldn't see anyone. Xiaoyu probably changed back. Jing Wang was very frustrated. Perhaps he shouldn't have gone to verify Chu Yan Yu and the Sixth Prince's relationship. When he saw the Sixth Prince slap Chu Yan Yu, Jing Wang felt an inexplicable strangeness in his heart. He didn't know why he would have this kind of feeling but he actually felt faintly pleased to see Chu Yan Yu get hit. However, because of this, he missed spending some more time with Xiao Yu again. How regrettable. He will probably have to wait until the next day to see the other man now. Jing Wang was just thinking this when the tightly closed bed curtain suddenly pulled open. Xiao Yu poked his head out from inside and rubbed his eyes drowsily. Jing Wang. Your Highness, how come you just came back? I was almost about to fall asleep. Li Yu said with a grin. 
Jing Wang was both surprised and elated at the same time, staring at Li Yu unblinkingly. The youth draped clothes over himself and got up, lighting up an oil lamp at the head of the bed which also lit up the only warm light in Jing Wang's heart. Your Highness, you. With a reddened face, Li Yu said bashfully with a hint of coquettishness, you still haven't told me what absorbing essence means. Jing Wang. End chapter. The Disabled Tyrant's Beloved Petfish Transmigration Chapter 68 Jing Wang really didn't know what to do with this fish. With a faint smile, he reached out and rubbed Li Yu on the head. Li Yu. Was this the same meaning as rubbing fish? Oh who cares? Li Yu grabbed Jing Wang and made him sit. Jing Wang was somewhat hesitant, not knowing what Xiao Yu planned to do. Nevertheless, he still listened to the fish and sat on the side of the bed. He hadn't even sat steady yet when this fish slid away and immediately pulled the bed curtains closed. The light from the oil lamps on the table outside passed through the bed curtains and lit up the area faintly. The hibiscus woven onto the curtains reflected onto the youth's snow white inner robes. The candlelight revealed Xiao Yu's eyes, which shone like the stars in excitement. Jing Wang's breathing immediately became tense. Jing Wang couldn't stop his desire for Xiao Yu from rising. Yet he promptly recalled the three basic rules he had agreed to and could only do his best to suppress this craving. How come you're sitting so far away, your highness? Do come closer. Li Yu casually patted the jade pillow nestled by his side. Jing Wang. How could Jing Wang dare to really move next to him? He only scooted over a little. Li Yu urged a few more times and said with a grin, It's not like I'm a wild beast. Could it be that your highness is scared of me right now? Jing Wang. Jing Wang said silently in his heart, Although you're not a wild beast, you're a seductive little vixen, much more powerful than a wild beast. After being urged a few times, Jing Wang felt it would be unreasonable if he didn't move closer. After hesitating for a moment, he sat next to Xiao Yu's side, leaving only a finger of a distance between the two of them. Li Yu was just waiting for him. When he came closer, Li Yu immediately snuggled in and enthusiastically hugged his arm, erasing the last tiny bit of distance between them. Your Highness, Your Highness, look. Li Yu pulled out a few booklets from behind his back like performing a magic trick. Using the lamplight from outside the curtains, Jing Wang vaguely recognized the books to be the memories of the White Snake and other such stories that he hasn't read in a long time. Jing Wang. Li Yu shoved the books into his hands which also shoved himself into Jing Wang's arms in the process. While secretly laughing within himself, outwardly Li Yu said with extreme seriousness, since you didn't want to tell me what absorbing essence meant, I recalled that your highness have many books. I figured the answer must be in the books, so I started researching. Jing Wang The warm and soft body that suddenly draped over him made Jing Wang felt helpless all over, not knowing where to put his hands and feet. Jing Wang felt like ever since he passed through the curtains, he fell into the Karpiao's gentle and warm trap, a sweet syrup that he was willing to remain within. As he silently recited a litany of calming phrase within his heart, Jing Wang quietly watched the acting Karpiao in his arms. And guess what I really did find it? It's in these books. Your Highness, look at what the White Snake Yao said to the scholar. Laying on Jing Wang's chest, Li Yu flipped to a certain page in the book and pointed at a sentence inside, purposely reading it out loudly. Husband, us Yao all need to absorb essence. Jing Wang. Jing Wang's heart skipped a beat as he got scared that something bad would happen if this continued. So, he hurriedly covered the Karpiao's mouth. Li Yu trembled as if he was having a seizure. He chuckled for a while. Jing Wang was stopping him from saying the line but he insisted on reciting it. He moved to free his lips and stubbornly flipped to another page. It was also here, the white snake Yao said, Husband, us Yao also need to absorb essence today as well. Li Yu blinked several times and raised his face, acting all innocent as he asked Jing Wang, Your Highness, 
are what was written in the book the same as what your highness wants to do. Being called husband in such a teasing tone by Li Yu, Jing Wang was extremely tormented. After struggling for a while, he lightly nodded his head. Li Yu felt like he finally caught Jing Wang, hook, line, and sinker. He asked complacently, Your Highness, the book talks about how to absorb essence. If Your Highness don't know how, shall we can read it together? If they read it together, then something would naturally happen in the process. This was Li Yu's plan. But Jing Wang remembered the three basic rules and firmly shook his head. He even wanted to put away the books. Li Yu. While Jing Wang wasn't here, Li Yu already schemed through all of the books himself. Although he didn't understand a lot of the ancient words, when it came to these things, it's best to trust your intuition. Once you get the fundamentals, it would be easy to understand the rest. Besides, he had astonishing comprehension ability. Jing Wang cherished him immensely, Li Yu both sympathized and loved Jing Wang. He already had thoughts of becoming more intimate with Jing Wang, then he was aroused by the content of the books. Even after lying down for a while, Li Yu didn't manage to calm down. Therefore, he decided to wait for Jing Wang in bed and tried everything to make Jing Wang comply. Yet at this crucial moment, Jing Wang actually didn't want to cooperate. And what made Jing Wang not want to cooperate seemed to be the three rules that Li Yu had established himself earlier. Li Yu suddenly had a feeling like he picked up a boulder and dropped it on his own feet. No, no wait. Li Yu abruptly remembered. What he wanted right now was not quite the same as violating the three basic rules. Back then when he insisted on establishing the three basic rules, it wasn't because he was unwilling to do this kind of thing. The main reason was because he was afraid they might not be able to control themselves in the throes of passion. Suddenly changing back into a fish in the middle would make it hard to explain. But how can he forget that there were things they could do where he didn't need to fear changing back into a fish while in the middle of doing it? So, why hold back? The books were useless. Unable to use them to seduce the boyfriend, now he needed to step up himself. Li Yu rustled about for a while, kicking all of the books off the bed. Then he raised his head and smiled mysteriously, Your Highness, I, I have a friend who once said, other than staying the night, boyfriends can also do some other things. Jing Wang Jing Wang was just about to chug vinegar about said friend when sweet lips immediately pressed against his. With an embarrassed smile, Xiao Yu took Jing Wang's hands and placed them on the pearl belt on his waist. The grass green blanket with gold edges was scrunched up into a ball for a while and then smoothed out later. Sweet and merry laughter traveled out of it intermittently. Li Yu was almost smothered by this feeling of tenderness. With a reddened face, he said in a tiny voice, Your Highness, let's do it together, all right. Jing Wang didn't quite understand at first but Xiao Yu used his body to make him understand. The Karpiao had plenty of different ways of absorbing essence. Jing Wang was inexperienced and still very new with this. Of course, Jing Wang listened to Xiao Yu. Following Xiao Yu, he could have his essence absorbed. He could also eat fish and also experience a happiness that he never had before. Your Highness, how long do you normally? Li Yu raised his disheveled head out of the warm and cozy blankets and asked Jing Wang. One side of the neck that was revealed outside was full of erotic red marks, making Jing Wang unable to look away. Li Yu poked at Jing Wang's leg with his toes. The sixth prince really arrive at a bad time. Li Yu didn't have much time left so he asked in order to make preparations for the future. With disheveled hair, Jing Wang who just tasted a hint of sweetness. No man would be humble at a time like this. Jing Wang silently held up one finger. Li Yu, huh? A cup of tea? That fast. Angered, Jing Wang pinched Li Yu's round cheek and lightly pressed down, crushing fish face until he cried out, AI, AI. Fish knew he was wrong and said with an apologetic smile, Sorry, I. I was wrong. Not that fast, it's. It's. If not a cup of tea, 
then it's an incense stick. Two hours. No matter what it was, there wasn't enough time. Li Yu straightened up and regretfully kissed the corner of Jing Wang's mouth. I'm sorry, your highness. I... I have to leave for a while again. Jing Wang understood and rubbed him on the head. Oh right, your highness, don't always bathe in cold water anymore in the future. Li Yu said with a smile. Although they couldn't do it until the last step, there were still plenty of steps before then. They can be like other couples and try them all. Whenever young Master Li left, Jing Wang always bathed in cold water. Although he could hide it from young Master Li, the little carp could see. Startled, Jing Wang nodded his head and then wanted to kiss Li Yu again. Unexpectedly, Xiao Yu, who just exchanged plenty of tenderness with him, suddenly changed expression and shoved him away, yelling out loudly, Ah, no time left. Xiao Yu, who finished absorbing essence, immediately threw on clothes and ran off. Jing Wang. Jing Wang remained laying on the bed, it was as if he could still feel the overwhelming warmth and tenderness just now lingering around him. Inside the fish tank, the little carp swam around sneakily, almost like he did something wrong. Looking left and right, he waited until he was certain that the person on the bed had fallen asleep before pulling out the charming little goldfish from his portable storage space. This was another gift that he had received. Jing Wang was always giving him things. Li Yu kissed it happily and then entered the system energetically. That's right. When he and Jing Wang were rolling around inside the blanket, the mission updated. However, Li Yu was busy with his hands and mouth at that time and didn't have the time to bother with it. This also meant that he and Jing Wang's romance and intimacy advanced through following their hearts. He didn't even care much about the main mission anymore. He also didn't imagine that the task he seemed to be stumped with had been resolved just like this. Getting married was one method of advancing one's relationship. Intimacy was another. He and Jing Wang would become closer and closer in the future. Maybe as they continued to date, the next mission would be accomplished on its own just like this. Li Yu felt like this kind of mental attitude was very good and he needed to maintain it. Logically, he disdained the system but in reality, he still needed to pay attention to when he can change back into a human completely. The reward for this be sticky with the tyrant mission was still one of Jing Wang's secrets. Li Yu felt like ever since the, the tyrant's guppy pet fish main mission, the system had become much more stingy. The reward for a task was always a secret. However, one can also think of it this way, the tyrant's guppy pet fish was the foundation and did its best to make fish improve everything. After creating the foundation, what occurred next was going in depth by exchanging secrets. There were still four choices to the secrets he could pick. The other three secrets from the reward for wind, flower, snow, and moon still remained. The secret that Li Yu picked earlier with the second prince falling into the water was replaced with an icon showing the images of faint shadows of clashing weapons. Looking at these secrets icon, Li Yu thought internally if all of these secrets were about the tyrannical behavior that Jing Wang had hidden from him. Because he was afraid of seeing bloody scenes, he instinctively avoided the icon with the swords. Therefore, he didn't pick that one and instead looked at what he didn't choose before. Li Yu randomly picked the pitch dark palace that he didn't recognize from before. He prepared himself mentally and very quickly entered the memories of the secret. This was the corner of some unknown palace, inside a dark room. On the table inside the room, there was a box that held needles and thread. Inside the box, there was a cloth with a half completed tiger embroidery. Next to the table sat a plump, thirty-something years old woman. This woman looked anxious and miserable, occasionally picking up the cloth tiger and adding to the embroidery. She looked expectant, as if waiting for someone. Not long afterwards, someone dressed as an inner servant entered the room. Li Yu felt somewhat strange. He didn't recognize this person at all. If they were one of Jing Wang's subordinates, he should be very familiar with them by now. The inner servant gave a paper package to the woman. 
the woman was extremely alarmed and knelt down, begging for mercy unceasingly. The inner servant only maintained a cold face and refused. Then, perhaps impatient and annoyed, they kicked the woman to the floor with a foot. The woman had no choice and poured out the powder inside the paper package with shaky hands. Li Yu thought this woman was being coerced by the inner servant and planned to drug Jing Wang. However, the next second, he saw the woman swallow the powder and started crying two rivers of tears. What Li Yu could see stopped here but he was left with even more questions than before. He knew that these secrets should be related to Jing Wang's past. But in the secret relating to the second prince, he could see Jing Wang and even himself. He can hear all sorts of noises. However, in this secret, there was no sound at all and he didn't see Jing Wang at all. Since Jing Wang wasn't there, how can it count as one of Jing Wang's secrets? And this woman and the inner servant, how were they related to Jing Wang? Also there was that package of powder. The palace mostly used aphrodisiacs or poison. Why did the woman had taken it herself? Was this woman like another Chu Yan Yu and wanted to drug Jing Wang but also gave herself a little first as well? This woman was a lot older so that conjecture seemed unlikely. Moreover, there weren't a lot of people like Chu Yan Yu. Li Yu couldn't figure it out. However, he was experienced already. Whenever the system gave him something he didn't understand, he usually could put it aside momentarily. Now that the be sticky with the tyrant task was completed, what was the next step? Li Yu was nervous and also excited. A deeper relationship than what they had now? What kind of infuriating task will it be now? Li Yu pretty much had a feeling. Taking a deep breath, he opened the main mission to look. The next step was. Share joys and sorrows with the tyrant, for better or for worse. End chapter. The Disabled Tyrant's Beloved Pet Fish Transmigration Chapter 69 Li Yu thought that the next step that would advance his and Jing Wang's relationship was an even more shameless task. However, it ended up being for better or for worse. Was this indicating that perhaps they will encounter some kind of hardship soon? Even if this was true, it was no problem. Both him and Jing Wang were 100% on the same page at all times. After becoming lovers, how could he expect to only enjoy the good things? No matter what happened, he was willing to accompany the other man down the same path, advancing and retreating together. They will definitely complete this step. Li Yu was very confident. The reward of for better or for worse task was still another one of Jing Wang's secrets. Looks like eventually, Li Yu was going to figure out all of Jing Wang's secrets. With a smile, Li Yu exited the system. He worriedly glanced at the bed. Jing Wang should be resting and not paying attention to the fish tank. Finally, Li Yu swam onto the silver stone bed and covered himself with the water grass blanket. Recalling the things he had done with Jing Wang under the cover of the blankets, the usually bold fish now started to feel somewhat embarrassed. With his heart jumping loudly, he furiously waved his tail, as if by flailing like this, he could chase away all of his embarrassment. Forget it. It's already been done. There's even more intense things to come. What's the point of feeling embarrassed now? Li Yu comforted himself continuously but still waved his tail a dozen of times before he finally fell asleep slowly. Meanwhile the person on the bed waited until the fish's movements stopped completely before opening his eyes to look tenderly at the fish. The wedding day of Ye Ching Huan and the Jinju princess got ever closer. The little princess had invited Li Yu to attend the wedding. Li Yu also agreed. Seeing that the wedding was within the next few days, Li Yu felt like it was time to prepare the gifts he was going to give Ye Shizi and the princess. It's not like he could attend the ceremony empty-handed. However, during the day he had to accompany Jing Wang when he went to work as his fish while at night, he had to romance Jing Wang in his human form. Every moment of his days were spent with Jing Wang. Li Yu could only specifically pick a day to have Jing Wang accompany him to buy a gift. Jing Wang really didn't get it at all. 
In the estate, Wang Shi usually took care of this kind of things. Jing Wang never worried about what Ye Ching Huan liked or appreciate. Why would Xiao Yu insist on going out to buy the gift himself? Why not randomly pick something from the storage room, there were plenty of choices in there. Your Highness, this is something from the heart. I need to prepare it myself for it to be sincere. Li Yu explained. Xiao Yu was bothering this much about for other people, Jing Wang felt extremely discontent. Nevertheless, Jing Wang was still very willing to accompany Xiao Yu to go outside. The whole trip he remained by Li Yu's side without leaving a single step between them. Li Yu liked gold and shiny things. The gifts he gave also followed his usual style. Considering Ye Shizi and the princess's status, he didn't need to concern himself with practicality. With his boyfriend to support him, Li Yu charged into a rather classy looking antique shop, wanting to buy a high quality antique to give to the couple. However, Li Yu wasn't really good at picking out antiques. First, he picked out a violet gold incense burner. Because he and Jing Wang agreed to hide their identities, the two people walked on foot and didn't bring any guards. Adding to the fact that Jing Wang rarely shopped himself, the storekeeper thought these two were easy targets and purposely praised his own store very extravagantly. Seeing how golden and dazzling this incense burner was and also how it was carved with an extremely complicated design, Li Yu felt extremely moved and immediately started pulling out his money. To the side, Jing Wang really couldn't keep watching and silently tapped the incense burner with his finger. A large hole opened up on the cover of the incense burner, exposing the color of rock. As it turned out, only the outside was covered by a layer of gold. Li Yu. So the nice looking antique incense burner was a fake. Fish couldn't be blamed for this. Fish didn't really have any experience and couldn't tell. However, since antique were supposed to be old, it should be all grey and dusty. Those that were gold and shiny definitely were questionable and shouldn't be bought. The shopkeeper, who sold fake goods, was captured by guards brought along by Wang Gong Gong, who was following the pair from a fair distance off and was taken to the magistrate's office. Li Yu quickly learned his lesson and pulled himself together. He went to another shop and took a fancy to a cosmetic box. The shop owner patted his chest and swore that it was an antique belonging to a princess from the previous dynasty. Li Yu was inclined to agree as the cosmetic box looked appealing and old, it should be really an antique. Li Yu was just about to buy it when Jing Wang gave a light cough and glanced outside the window. Li Yu looked over as well and saw on another stall, a vendor was also selling the same antique cosmetic box from the previous dynasty over there. Li Yu. Li Yu received a huge blow and felt that he really didn't have the luck in buying antiques. In a huff, he changed to simply buying gold and silver ornaments. He picked out a gold and jade screen, feeling like this time, there shouldn't be a problem. However, the back of the screen had a very well hidden crack which was discovered by the sharp-eyed Jing Wang. Jing Wang just touched it lightly and the screen immediately split in half. Li Yu then picked out a green jade phoenix and dragon tablet. Jing Wang casually splashed a cup of cold tea on it. As it turned out, the jade used to make the tablet was fake jade. The green color of the material was only a dye. With a cup of cold tea, the green dye immediately washed off. They went to one shop after another, everything that Li Yu picked out was either fake or broken. Wang Shi arrested one shopkeeper after another. But Li Yu still hadn't found anything. He was even a koi. What kind of luck was this? Li Yu was very unhappy that he continued to be deceived by fakes one after another. Wasn't this saying that his judgment and insight was so bad that he was practically blind? Exploding with rage, Li Yu huffed and went to leave. Jing Wang immediately grabbed him and stuffed something into his hand. Li Yu wasn't actually angry at Jing Wang. It's just that continuously picking fake items made him look very stupid. Fish felt like he was losing face here. For the sake of his boyfriend, he calmed down somewhat and lowered his head to look at the thing that Jing Wang gave him. It was another little gold fish again. 
With one look he can tell that this was the same style as the one that Jing Wang gave him before. It had the same charming look, only the pose wasn't the same. The fish before had its tail curled. This one had its lips pursed and was foolishly blowing bubbles. With furrowed brows, Li Yu glanced at Jing Wang. Jing Wang was also looking back at him. Li Yu knew that the other was begging for mercy again and laughed out loud. Holding this fish snugly in his hand, Li Yu was no longer as angry as before. How many little gold fishes were there exactly? Li Yu voluntarily leaned over and let Jing Wang help him hang this fish on his waist as well. With a smile, Jing Wang helped him hang the fish. Then, tugging Li Yu's hand, Jing Wang brought him to the biggest jewelry store in the Imperial City. The shopkeeper of the jewelry store often did business with high-ranking officials. Recognizing Jing Wang, he hastily came over to welcome them and exchange pleasant greetings. Li Yu finally learned that the fish that Jing Wang gifted him were all custom-made here. He was really stupid. Why did he go searching for shops himself? Why didn't he ask Jing Wang for some advice earlier? He could have avoided walking around in a big circle and also getting swindled so many times. It was because he never imagined that Jing Wang would also visit a jewelry store. With Jing Wang's presence by Li Yu's side, the shopkeeper voluntarily brought out all of the high quality goods and displayed them for young Master Li to choose from. Li Yu went all out and first picked out a pair of silver bottles, then a gold scepter and a pair of vivid, lifelike jade dolls. Jing Wang put down a few banknotes. The shopkeeper swiftly ordered people to wrap everything up to be delivered to the Jing estate soon. There weren't many opportunities to come to the jewelry store. Li Yu thought for a second and added an oval-shaped silver pearl to his purchase. This pearl was only about the size of a thumb. The design on it looked a bit like the modern image of Earth, which caught Li Yu's attention. Li Yu felt that Jing Wang gifted him so many things but he still haven't given Jing Wang any present before. Li Yu asked the shopkeeper for a red string and strung up the pearl himself before handing it to Jing Wang. I'm giving this to you, your highness. Many thanks for taking care of me. Li Yu said with a smile. Jing Wang bought everything else with his bank notes. Now it was Li Yu's turn. Li Yu rushed to pull out a bulging, light gold colored money pouch to pay the bills. Actually, he also got this from Wang Shi before leaving the estate, so it didn't count as his money. However, since the money was coming out of his hands, then it counted as him buying it. This kind of pearl from the jewelry store should be very expensive, right? Li Yu thought instinctively. The jewelry storekeeper wanted to speak but hesitated. He didn't dare to say at all that this pearl, which was used for decoration, didn't cost anything and could even be given for free. Under Jing Wang's ice-cold expression and the expectant gaze of the little young master next to Jing Wang's side, the shopkeeper deliberated back and forth before finally giving a price meekly. Li Yu very excitedly paid the money. The pearl was indeed somewhat expensive. Li Yu felt a bit pained when he pulled out the money. However, you get what you paid for. Seeing Jing Wang hang the pearl on his waist right in front of his eyes, Li Yu felt incomparably delighted, feeling like his judgment and insight weren't at an irreversible stage yet. At least, he picked a great boyfriend. After buying the gifts and returning to the estate, Jing Wang ordered people to rewrite the gift list and put the gifts that Li Yu bought on it as well. Why place them together with yours? Li Yu wanted to know. The things that he bought definitely couldn't compare to Jing Wang's gift. Jing Wang wrote Li Yu's name next to his own and then gave Li Yu a deep profound look. Li Yu understood in a flash and flushed red all the way to his ears. The place next to a Wang was for the consort. The reason why Jing Wang would place their gifts and names together naturally was because he considered Li Yu to be family as his consort. They were still only dating. Should he really become the princess consort? Li Yu deliberated back and forth for a while but didn't say any words of refusal in the end. On the wedding day, Li Yu wore an embroidered robe that Jing Wang ordered to be made for him, which had red corals and silver lotuses. Binding his hair with a jade hairpin, 
Abruptly you had a bunch of tinkling little gold fishes hanging from his waist, looking sharp and noble. Jing Wang also wore a matching black robe with purple and red lining. With his hair bound with a red hair tie, Jing Wang looked extraordinarily handsome. Li Yu sneakily looked over, ever so gleeful. The two of them looked like they were wearing matching couple's outfits. If they went out wearing these, would they end up stealing Ye Shizhi's limelight? Jing Wang held Li Yu around the waist, wanting him to feel at ease. His Highness Jing Wang didn't care about what Ye Ching Huan would think at all. After the two finished getting ready, it was time to leave. Li Yu still sat in the carriage together with Jing Wang. As soon as he got in, he discovered something didn't seem right. Last time when they went to the marketplace, it was clearly a very narrow and cramped carriage. This time it was very spacious with enough space for two people and plenty to spare. The tea table, tea set and even desserts that he loved to eat were all prepared in there. Holding Li Yu's hand, Jing Wang sat down with a smile. Li Yu gave Jing Wang a vicious glare, thinking sure enough, this guy was a scoundrel. Since they were going to the Chang'an Palace this time, in order to take precautions in case Xiao Yu changed back while they were there, Jing Wang still brought his pet fish. The crystal bottle was placed in the corner. The fish pillow floated there quietly, as if looking at the two people. The carriage started moving. Jing Wang gave Li Yu a book. Of course, it wasn't the kind about Yao. Jing Wang discovered that Li Yu really liked to read folk stories. This time the prepared carriage was very big. Li Yu laid down comfortably and used Jing Wang's knee as a pillow. He flipped through the book while conversing with Jing Wang. Jing Wang picked up a peach blossom cookie and very accordingly ripped it into pieces. One of the pieces was given to feed the fish inside the crystal bottle. All of the other pieces were fed to the carpyal who had opened his mouth wide in a pitiful cry for food. They very quickly arrived at Chang'an Palace. On this day, the Chang'an Palace was bustling with activities. The whole estate was decorated with lanterns and colored banners all over. For Ye Ching Huan and the princess's wedding, not only did the Jinju royal family and all of Chang'an Palace's friends and family showed up, there were also plenty of important government officials who came to congratulate them. Head steward Luo brought over the emperor's imperial edict, bestowing a big pile of gifts. The list of gifts couldn't even be recited in a short amount of time. The king of Jinju also loved this daughter very dearly. The procession for the bride was at least 10 li long with about over 100 boxes of dowry. Li Yu followed Jing Wang and was welcomed inside by the new groom. Yes, she's he personally. Jing Wang nodded faintly to the Duke of Chang'an, who was sitting in the main table. The current Duke of Chang'an was the late Empress Yao Hui's brother and was Jing Wang's maternal uncle. When the two saw each other, many words were exchanged silently. The Duke of Chang'an's wife and Jing Wang's aunt was also greeting the guests. When he saw Jing Wang came in with the youth next to him looking very much like a couple, the Duchess of Chang'an had a smile in her eyes. Not long later, a maid came over and gave Li Yu a pair of jade butterflies, saying with a smile, the madam thanks his highness and young master Li for coming to attend the wedding, and also wishes the two of you a long and happy life together. Li Yu accepted the butterflies and saw the Duchess of Chang'an looking at him from afar with a smile. Li Yu was puzzled. Wasn't today Ye Ching Huan's wedding? Why would she say that to him and Jing Wang? Could it be? Li Yu suddenly realized something. Was Jing Wang also bringing him to Chang'an Palace today to meet the family? Li Yu covered his face. This is all so sudden. Fish wasn't prepared at all. Not to mention, Fish was too happy. End chapter.